Hello, welcome to Pilot Talk. Today, I'll be talking to you about the issue or the news I've been making the rounds in the last couple of days. And that's the arrest or the purported arrest of B1A OKK, the CEO of Invictus Group Nigeria. Today, um, I'll be, we'll be talking about um, this Borjoni uh, entrepreneur who's been making rounds in the news for in the last few years. Um, KK was at one point um, the one of the Africa's most promising entrepreneurs by Forbes under 30 in 2016. Um, is being listed among Forbes 100 most influential young Africans in 2018. So clearly, this is someone that's meant to be seen as a role model and an inspiration, if you like, of young uh, Nigerians. And Nigerians was maybe is just um, a young entrepreneur who became a froster out of opportunity. I know it sounds weird, and that's basically saying that I was thinking that way because I wanted this to be false. I still want it to be false. Not purposefully, not, not just because of who being one A, uh, if I call his name right, but because of many Nigerian youth out there today. And because, including myself, because that's one promise or one hope dashed again, if that uh, happens to be true. But I follow Tolu Ogunlesi on Twitter and a lot of other social media influencers, if you like, in Nigeria. And I saw the 44 paragraph affidavit or warrant of arrest, if you like, um, for this Obi Invictus, as a lot of people call him. And I took time to read this, and it was pretty damning. Um, when I read, I've read it three times, and I'm going to be frank with you. With all the redactions in the affidavit, it doesn't really say. Or I've not been able to see it there that he definitely was the primary aim behind this fraudulent, um, this fraud or this series of fraud, which we'll talk about a bit of them in a bit for people that, that do not know. So, but it shows how it shows that he's heavily linked and connected to the fraud frauds if you like so yeah first things first what do we know about obi invictus obi wane okeke um was is the founder of, uh, of invictus group and if you look on the website of invictus group he has a lot of um he has his hand in lots of a lot of things so Invictus Group is involved in there's Invictus Construction, Invictus Oil and Gas, Invictus Real Estate, Invictus Investments, St. Kilda Farms, C Vision Zim, Zim, Zambia, and Construction Zambia, Invictus Energy, Invictus Technologies Limited, Invictus Construct, Contractors South Africa, and Invictus Foundation. So that's a gamut of a lot of businesses. And you think that as a fledgling Nigerian youth, that, that, that shows promise of that is going somewhere. And I believe that's why Ford, uh, sorry, Forbes, on more than one occasion, have recognized him as promising and influential Nigerian youth. He's given thoughts at Ted, Yaba, and, and the rest of it. So, He's got his hands in, in, in many pies, really. So, now, looking at that, he, he holds a bachelor's or master's degree 
in international relations, international relations and counterterrorism, counterterrorism from Monash University in Australia. And might I had this guy was a first class student. So he's received many leadership honorary awards from home and abroad. Um, and He's found it, he has a foundation, he spares a foundation called Literacy Africa Projects, which he donates books, uh, takes, uh, we take used books from abroad to Nigerians or Nigerian or kids in Africa, so, which was quite a good initiative, if you like. So that has all the right um, connotation from that point of view but now looking at the affidavits of the arrests which um, I believe was issued on August 2nd of August 2019 sworn by one martial word these affidavits talks about on paragraph 7 it says Juna Track Holding Limited, Expo Sales Office for Caterpillar Heavy Industrial and Farm Equipment in United Kingdom was defrauded of wire transfers of up to 11 million US dollars. In, and the FBI launched an investigation into this in July 2018. 11 million dollars is a lot of money. And looking at that again, that's why I thought in the first place that okay, maybe it was just a one off thing that okay, well, he stumbled on money and it just got derailed, he got distracted by the figures or the money he's seen. But when you read further the affidavits, if you um, look at how this occurred, it shows a systemic. Or a systematic way of defrauding people, which uh, is loosely referred to as Yahoo Yahoo in Nigeria. So, a systematic way of fishing. It's not like you try to get into contract with them, sign contracts, got the money, and zoomed off. This involves a case of um, unauthorized. Um, access of people's accounts thereby authorizing transactions on their behalf and this um, this unauthorized access was made at least 464 times so this is not a one-off thing let's get that clearly and also it involves the 11 million we're talking about involves at least 15 transactions which means the vast for money to be transferred at least 15 times. And if you read further into the affidavit, it includes the, it showed that the email of the CFO of Unitrack that was act or unauthorizedly with, that the access without authority was, they created a profile or a criteria a criterion to actually hide their email transactions showing making sure that the guy or, or the CFO does not see what they're doing on his account and it also includes creating um, a similar email or sorry a domain name registering a domain name for one of their big clients just to um, give the semblance that when the money is being paid that they're paying um, the right company so and at the end of the day when you look at the email address that's registered that's been registering this website is linked to iconoclast1960 at gmail.com which under Wu's query is owned by a Nigerian and it's in Nigeria so I believe that reading from this, obviously everyone has to be um, presumed innocent or to proven guilty, and I'm 
more for that as well. But reading this and the detail and the effort that have been put into putting this together, even if Obi is not directly responsible, it's give it's going to give a lasting impact or um, have a knock-on effect on Nigerian youth who are striving to actually make it um, in the business world. That's what we've been clamoring about. That's what the whole um, outrage about Nigerian youth are lazy is about. That's a whole campaign about not too young to run in Nigeria is about. And that's why a lot of hardworking Nigerian youths these days keep uh, challenging or sensitizing other Nigerian youths that are struggling or trying to be something for themselves to toe the right, right path. So, when um, I've, I've been read this, it's pretty disappointing what, what this is, and um, I probably encourage people who want to um, know about this guy or get personal with him, read, watch his interview on, on BBC, on Facebook, and I'm sure he's on YouTube. I can put the link in the description below as well for people that want to read it. This the guy's story for now, a, it must be one of the greatest um, setup or double life, if you like. That you can ever imagine and it kind of kind of really worries it worries one as a Nigerian if he's responsible the mastermind of this great scam and my my um, I heard that this scam is not only against um, this Unitrack there was another company in the United States. Unitrack is in the UK. There was another company in the United States, um, I think Red, Red Wing, who claimed that that same email address, iconoclast1960 at gmail.com, has conned them or yeah, swindled them of over a million dollars as well. And th th this is really a cause for worry. Might I also add that? This guy went into the United States himself in March on a business transaction and they, with a colleague or a friend, whose name is redacted, I might have in the whole affidavit, maybe he's cooperating with them and he's had to give them um, Obi or more information that might actually um, be important or necessary in the conviction of Obi. Invictus and to be so emboldened to live a life and put yourself in the public domain as this fledgling business entrepreneur and a source of inspiration, if you like, of uh, for a lot of people. I could see how um, BBC's Veronica was all over her in the interview. And with BBC, and because it's nothing short of inspirational um, interview, if you like, to see someone rising from nothing to something. So I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm not saying that a lot of people shouldn't uh, believe or toe that line, but it's just disheartening in that that turned out to be double life, a life of fiction another dark life where uh, businesses or other people are being put in unnecessary jeopardy. So that said, this this menace and they also emphasize the um, effrontery, the, the, the growing effrontery of Nigerian youth in cybercrime if you like, because I must say that this case, this obese case has polarize Nigerian youth to a large extent and I don't really get why. I get it if I get the presumption of innocence that the guy is innocent or proven guilty 
but I do not get why Nigerians will polarize on whether such acts or series of actions or chain of actions are right or wrong. The bottom line is whether OB Invictus is innocent or not, such um, actions should be frowned upon by everyone. So, so I don't get why that the fact that that polarizes the youth of Nigeria is actually scary uh, as a person, and also the. I, I could talk from personal experience as well because where I work for in United, the company I work for in the United Kingdom has experienced something of sort. Um, but unfortunately for the people that try to defraud uh, the company I work for, I happen to work in the finance department. I happen to, my signature happened to be important to authorizing payments up to a certain amount. And that kind of made it pass through my desk, if you like. And all I could tell my assistant, or people I work with, and colleagues is just disregard it because it's one of those things. But ironically, I am a Nigerian as well, and I'm, I'm the only Nigerian in my place of work, and I have to deal with things like this. And it kind of puts you in bad light when people talk about your king's name. Um, I mean this in some way. Because regardless of what part of Nigeria you come from, I believe Nigeria is one. So it, it's a serious problem in the in the corporate world. I know it, there's the personal world where people they romance and all that, but in the corporate world, it's a serious, serious, serious um, menace that a lot of businesses are facing. So and also. It's also creating problems for Nigerians home and abroad, especially Nigerians abroad, because most of these transactions or, or actions or, or fraud are done. The victims are people abroad. So, and someone that has been defrauded does not see... The first impression is to build a defense, a uh, false wall, when you see someone from that region of the world where you will be defrauded from, especially when you do not really have a closure uh, and things like that. Imagine a Nigerian in America, oh sorry, in the UK, trying to apply for a job in that Unitrack holdings. You're more than likely gonna, no matter how fair or how diverse the, the company is, the first impression will be that we just took a huge hit from people from your country, so why should you be given a chance? So, you're more than likely going to have to do um, to, to oversell yourself, if you like, before you, you're given a, a, a chance in places like that. And also, investors to know about this incident. The more things like this make the round in the news, the more scared the, invest, the investors are of actually trying to transact investing in Nigeria. And that's what we need. Even Nigerian youths need that. Because if you're an entrepreneur, you've got a fantastic idea. The guy in one of his um one of his speeches, his TED talk, he was talking about um quoting Emmanuel Macron when he said that no matter how crazy your idea is, you're welcome in France. So someone that is in trying to inspire or lead by example to other Nigerian youth and he, if he did it, he most likely has squandered the chance or make it harder for all the Nigerian youth out there to actually achieve greater height or the ideal height that he purported that he's at. The other part, uh, there's something else I want to talk about what this whole thing, what this whole incident has brought to bear is the efforts of EFCC, ICPC and other law enforcement agents on things like this. It's, when I look at my social media handle and the EFCC news, I think 
I've not looked at the statistics, but arrests must be made. They must be making arrests like every day. And people must have been jailed by EFCC every month. But one thing is certain, the number, number of people in cybercrime hasn't reduced. And might I add that someone was just arrested in Lagos recently, I saw it in one of the news, for running a Yahoo Yahoo school. He was arrested alongside eight students. So for things like that, the, the, the audacity and the effrontery that with which people continue to do this should be baffling that arrest is not enough. Arrest is not enough. Just arresting them is just, you're not tackling the root, the root cause and you're not actually, um, you're not tackling the root cause and you're not, you're just stretching the problem. It's going to be recurring. You arrest one, another one will spring up. You arrest one, another one will spring up. People need to be engaged. Nigerian youths need to be engaged. The environment needs to be made more enabling to allow the few good ones or, or the good ones to actually thrive. And maybe they can extend uh, or stretch out or motivate or inspire others. I'm not making a case for Obi if he did this because he's deceived the whole he's even deceived me if, if he did it because I'm all for the success of average Nigerian youth out there. We are meant to take over from this generation that started as youth and refused to move on in faces. Um, who are the Nigerian leaders, uh, still the Nigerian leaders of today? So. I believe the federal government need to make um, need to do more and stakeholders need to be invited into discussion of how to rid ourselves of this menace. Internet frauds are uh, wire frauds are, come, are done everywhere, but Nigeria seems to be the capsule of the internet fraud of the world as of today. That's the piece I've got for this episode of Palo Talk. Do join us another time. Until then, have a great day.